warm welcome to Mr. Phil Chen. Cynthia and Sandy for um, having this and getting all the great musicians behind the scene to be recognized. I was inducted 32 years ago. By the way, my name is Phil Chen. And um, so they have asked me to present this award to a very good friend of mine guitarist. He's from the land of fish and chips, the Beatles, Rolling Stone, Zeppelin, who? Um, oh, Queen. And he is a wonderful, wonderful, great friend of mine. And um, I think he's a, I'm so happy for him. Because he's very, he's one of my great friends and he's very, you know, he doesn't talk much, only on the guitar. And if you go to Sin City, you will see him playing um, at the Rock Hall, or sometimes he plays with DC4, and uh, I forgot the name of the group, Tango, Bang Tango. Anyway, I would like to welcome, give a round, big round of applause for this. I think he's a great guitarist, but don't take my word for it. You just have to ask Ronnie James Dio, who got him in the band at the age of 17. Age of 17, I couldn't even piss straight then. <laughs> so, um, once again, the great, another British invasion. Um, Mr. Ron Wingate Robertson. Congrats, Ron. Um, firstly, can I say thanks to Phil and Chen because he uh, feels like a brother to me. And um, he's, as you know, he's played for Jeff Beck. Rod Stewart, he's got, he's got like 50 gold and platinum, so that's the man right there. Sorry, I'm going to read from my phone here. Oh my God. Thank you, Sandy Rizzo and Cindy, Cindy Landine, for making all this possible. Sir Harry Cowell, owner of Raiding the Rock Vault. Uh, Odie Logan, my friend Odie Logan, and Mina, my girlfriend. Sandy asked us to speak for a few minutes, so I wrote a little speech. Okay, thank you for awarding me this. It's a great privilege and surprise to me to be counted amongst all these great people. I can't believe I'm in the company of greats like Jim Keltner, Hugh MacDonald, Phil Chen, to name a few. I'm going to run away with it before anyone realises I'm here. The main person I have to thank is Ronnie James Dio. And of course Wendy Dio. Without them giving me this gift, I wouldn't have been able to live out my dream. Sometime in, sometime in 1988, I read that Dio needed a new guitar player and came up with a crazy idea that I would send in an audition tape. I had a local reputation as a good rock guitarist and had the technique of shred guitarists like Yngwie Malmsteen and Paul Gilbert, to name a few, under my fingers. But I was raised more on, the, uh, on my discoveries, Billy Gibbons, Brian May, Gary Moore, and the Hendrix tape that my dad gave me. Hope this isn't too long. Okay. Where am I? I sent my audition tape after a friend had told me when I wanted to check it out. What's the worst thing that can happen? They say no. 
I didn't hear anything back for some months and forgot about it when a letter arrived. It was from the record company. I sent it to, saying they had no need for session guitarists. It had never reached Ronnie. So I looked on the albums for the fan club address in America and I sent it there. As I remember, a friend of my dad pranked me once saying he was calling from America. Then one evening, while I was watching Star Trek with my family, the phone rang and I answered it. Can you hold for Wendy Dio? It was a scratchy line, so it sounded international. When Wendy came on the phone, she had an English meets American accent and she asked me, how would you feel playing in front of 20,000 people? And being a cocky kid, I said, well, fine. <laughs> she then asked where I would be playing, that Ronnie could come and see me, and I told her, a little disappointed that she wasn't going to fly me to America, that my band was competing in the Cambridge Rock Competition at the Corn Exchange in Cambridge. She then said that she would fly me out to America and audition for the group. A dream come true, as I had by this point become obsessed with, being, uh, with getting a big break. My hero at the time, Steve Vai, had gotten, had gotten his break working for Frank Zappa at 18, and time was nearly over because I was 17. <laughs> My dad had told me not to be nervous, as I was getting a free trip to America to play with my heroes, and when I touched down in Los Angeles, after seeing its crisscross street blocks from high up in the sky through the smog, it felt like I was walking onto the set of the A-Team. I told myself I had to stay, I didn't want to go home. At the audition, Ronnie told me he was rooting for me and that he wanted it to happen. And when I saw Jimmy Bain smiling as we played through Stand Up and Shout last in line, I was quietly confident. I was quietly confident inside but I was still overjoyed inside when Larry Morand quietly let it slip to me that I had the gig after the second audition. I had to act surprised when Ronnie officially offered the gig to me at a birthday party for only Logan's dad. They told me to go back to England, get my stuff, and come back in two weeks to start recording on the record. I'd done it, I'd hit the jackpot, achieved my dreams. Thanks again. The great Drew and Robert Smith. Just one thing, a few people of the are great. Dick and Van Halen and Brian May and he by no means, he's right up here with him. So, another lining. <laughs> another, another the, the, the real man, the great Bill Chen. Drew and Robert Smith. Thank you guys. Amazing.